you guys? How you doing? It's KL. Hey, how we doing, darling? I am sorry. I have been away for a couple of days. Um, not away, but I haven't been on Periscope because I've been suffering new phone blues. And anybody watching, let me just say this. Fellas, listen to your wife. Yes, I'm telling you right now, listen to your wife, your significant other. Women just have an insight that us men don't have and fellas don't take it personal. I guess the Lord gave them that ability because it's their nurturers. I'm about to show you what's wrong with my phone. I made an impulse purchase, something I never do. And my wife has been giving me the business the last four or five days because I have not been able to get on Periscope or anything because I got... I have a thing for big phones. I'm not going <laughs> yay to the new phone. <laughs> See, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to show it to you. This this is my new phone, right? You see how big this phone is? Yes. I got gigantic hands. No. that's I, Actually, I'll put it next to my face. Y'all could get an idea how big. It's like seven inches. All right? It's a gigantic phone. And it's from Posh Mobile. Now, here's the problem with the phone. Beautifully big phone. It's like a phone tablet connected and I had bought it because it saved me from taking my um, my iPad <laughs> computer with me. And so I had bought it because it's this way I could have my phone and not have to take my iPad with me when I travel, when I'm in the hotel and stuff like that. Actually, I don't have my cross on. And so I just like to wear my cross, excuse me. So anyway, the phone is a lemon. It is a horrible phone. The apps run slow. The phone runs slow. It is horrible. Horrible. I should have just saved the money and bought something else. And let me tell you how bad it is. My wife has been laughing at me because I always get on her about impulse poach. I can't because if you've, if you've had the phone for more than seven days or talk more than 60 minutes, you can't take it back. So, no, so you can't take it back. So, my wife was saying to me, you're always telling me about think before you make purchases. And I was like, you're right. And I just fell in love with, I wanted a large phone. I it's just got a big, gigantic piece of garbage. So I went back today because I wanted to actually go talk to the, the chick. <laughs> you're right. I wanted to go back and talk to the chick that sold me the phone. And she wasn't there today. So when I was talking to the guy that was there and I showed him the phone, he said, where'd you buy that? I said, I bought it here. He was like, we sell this? I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Let me find out I got the trick phone. So then I was explaining everything to him. He was like, oh, bro, you should have bought that phone. I said, you telling me something I already know? So I'm going to have to just eat this. Actually, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to purchase a new phone, something that I know works <laughs> from a company that I know, so I can get back to my live streaming and the other things that I do. And the sad part is here is my phone, my regular phone that I do my Skypes and everything from Galaxy 4. And there's nothing wrong with the phone. Actually, let me hold these two phones up. All right? You see the size of this phone? There's nothing wrong with my phone. I had a pure, I got some extra money in my pocket moment. And I wilded out and bought the big mega phone when my simple Galaxy S4, there's nothing wrong with it. So actually what I might do is just turn that back on, take the loss of this, and going back to what I was doing because it's just, it's interrupting. And it's cost me more. Oh, everything falling. This caused me more than just the price of the phone because I can't do business. I can't, just the apps don't work. Everything is slow and it's just so much slower than what I'm used to. And yes, listen to your wife. And I say this all the time. I have no problem saying it. Fellas, please listen to your wife. Listen to your significant other. She knows. They have an intuitive sense women's intuition mothers know it or whatever whatever it is <laughs> they just know and my wife is giving me the business but it's okay you know why because you live and learn sometimes you got to take expensive losses to learn not to be, let it happen again so new phone blues i got a phone that's less than three weeks old that's worthless so now I got to go pay to have it reconnected to my old phone, turn back on. And that's going to teach me. And you know what the lesson is? I bought something I didn't need when the, what I had was okay. And that leads me to, like, relationships. Sometimes we look past what we have. 
because we think something else is better. Yes, the phone is two times bigger the size of my original phone. New toy for KL, exactly right. The phone is two times bigger than my original phone. So what did I think? I was getting more. When in actuality, I got less. And many of us have a, a significant other that rocks with us, been with us, but they may not look like, they may not, hey, there's the princess. They may not look like or be what they were. There's the princess. Hey, mama, get off my ear. Why you grabbing my ear? Say hi, baby. Hi. Hey, darling, that's the princess. <laughs> Stop playing with my ear. Why are you playing with my ear? Say, somebody say hello. Say hi. Hi. What's your name? K.O. Yes, what's my name? K.O. <laughs> yes, this is K.L. K-A-Y. E L L E and I am K period L period. I am big K L and this is little K L. Do you see you? You see the princess? How old are you, K L? How old are you, K L? One. You're one? K L, how old are you? Two. Thank you. <laughs> how many fingers is that? Two. <laughs> so Daddy was talking about his big phone and my foolish purchase because I didn't <laughs> listen to mommy. I should have listened to mommy. <laughs> see you later. Bye bye. So, <laughs> yes, that is my my princess. That is why I do what I do. But yeah, so you know, too often we we look past what we have because it may not be as shiny and new. It may not be as fancy as something that you see. And you have to catch yourself and stop and think: Has it been working? Has it been doing the job that it's supposed to do? Because if that person in your life has been giving you everything that you've been supposed to get, be careful in looking for the new. Be careful in looking for the upgrade. Because it may not be needed and you may be giving away more than you're actually gaining. Now, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't look to stay in negative situations. If there had been something wrong with my original phone, well, then by all means, it needed to be replaced. But in this particular case, I acted on impulse. And we have to understand that when we act on impulse, we tend to risk more than we're actually gaining. And so really got to stay away from that the best way that we can. So also, just to catch up, you guys know I will be in Detroit uh, June 4th for the Building Better Relationships Conference um, with uh, Brother Otis Bellinger and Sister Regina Poole. I'm trying to find the flyer. I wanted to bring the flyer up. But um, also, I want to give a shout out to Stephanie C. Harper. Unfortunately, this was the week weekend. I was supposed to be in Napa Valley, California. And I am so frustrated that I cannot be. But I have a second interview in Delaware that I have to. Uh, I like Bofa. Bofa who? Who is Bofa? <laughs> I just wanted to see if you would go there and get yourself blocked. I already knew what you was talking about, my man. There you go. Congratulations. But yeah, I have an interview in um, in Delaware, so unfortunately I can't go to the speaking engagement that I had in Napa Valley, California. And let me tell you something. There's nothing harder than trying to get your refunds back from tickets that you purchase, but my wife and I have to go to um, Delaware. Yes, I'm moving to Delaware in June, so I have to go to a second interview. And I also, you know, just to catch all up on things, I just turned down a position in Delaware. Um, the money was great. The hours was even better, only 29 hours a week for maximum dollar. But the problem was he wanted me to start in a couple of weeks, and there was no way I could close out my business here in New York close out things with the school that I'm at, the apartment that I'm at, and everything in a couple of weeks to be able to start. Um, so I just had to say no, and it was hard. With the amount of money that he was offering, it was a lot. But money does money does not dictate all of my, um, my decisions. Um, and we have to realize that, is that once you start allowing money, something with no feeling, to dictate decisions that could create some very negative feelings. No. Nah. So once I took the money off the table, I looked at all the particulars and I said, no, you know what, Lord? 
I prayed about it and said, I'm going to let this go. And if it's for me, when I get there in June, it'll be there for me. And if it's not for me, well, then I'll go on to something else. I've applied for other jobs, and we're going to see how this one works out with the second interview. And if it doesn't go, fine. I am still stepping out on faith and leaving teaching here in New York and going on to Delaware to start my second life. Um, as you guys know, I'm in grad school, and it has been rough. <sighs> That's the only way I can say it. Um, it has been rough. And I am trying to stay up with what this professor is asking the best that I can and carrying a full-time job and taking care of the wife and the princess. It's not easy. And I am getting whipped like Denzel in glory. But I am holding my own. And I got um, three weeks left. This is week number six, seven, and eight coming up. And I'm going to get through the best that I can and pray for this B and pray harder for this A and see what happens. And then go on to the second class, which starts a couple of weeks after. Basically, the goal is every eight weeks, every ten weeks, until I finish. I'm not taking any breaks. Yes, had to go back to school. Um, thank you so much. Thank you both ladies. Hey, hey, I don't see any hearts going up here. Y'all better tap this screen. Come on, brother Needed. I've been had a rough couple of weeks. I admitted that I was stupid and should have listened to my wife. That by alone should have been like 9,000 hearts because not too many of us dudes will suck up our egos and Admit that we should listen. Thank you so much. Let's have a heart party over there. Keep them going because, um, yeah, the school thing is rough because it's 11 years since I got my first master's degree. But the direction that I'm taking my life and the direction I'm taking my business, the degree is necessary. I could actually do things with my original master's degree, but the second master's degree is necessary for the direction that I'm going in with ministry, with counseling, and what I'm doing with my writing and what I'm doing with the business. <sighs> but it's not easy. It is not easy at all, and I am praying because this class could really go either way because I'm not sure what this final paper is going to be, but I'm going to give it a hard go. Um, more than two colors. There you go. Hearts coming more than two colors. Let's go. I see, I think, four or five people on here. Let's tap that screen, guys, because the more hearts that you give, the further it moves up. So when I do content, it'll actually be there so people don't have to search for me other than actually you can share this with your followers let folks know that i'm on so they can get this as well as share it on twitter i appreciate that too but back to the relationship part because that is something that i'm big on my scopes are basically education the literary industry or relationships you know i was thinking about it when i was leaving the, the metro pcs store today and i have no problem saying i have metro pcs that's right on that double tap let's go guys but I just see two colors i just see what's going on here i got the joker colors purple and green i see about <laughs> Thank you. They're natural. I don't do anything to it. I appreciate it. But um, can I get a couple of hearts for the eyebrows at least? Hey, baby doll, where you at? So anyway, um, thank you. Appreciate it. So I was thinking about it when I was coming back from the Metro PCS store, and I'm saying to myself, darling, get up off the floor. Come here. No, no, no. Come on. Go back in the room with Mommy. Can't play in Daddy's office. Come on. Let's go. Um, I was thinking about it, and I was saying to myself, you know, relationships are mirrors to every other aspect of our lives but we have to be very very careful in how we perceive our relationships you sometimes have to practice empathy within your own relationship step outside your thought process and look at your relationship on an overall whole and if it's working and only needs tweaking then tweak it too often we're in this Seek and destroy. Just if it doesn't look right, I'm destroying it and I'm walking away. No. Sometimes we got to dig in to that pit that might be the unhappiness. Dig in and find a way to heal what's wrong. Hey, beautiful butterfly. Um, and heal what's wrong instead of saying, you know what? I'm done with it. Because the restart, the reboot could be so timely and so costly that it may take you years. Hey, darling. I know. Hey, what's going on? Hey, there we go. Hey, I know. It's, it's been hectic, darling. I've been tied up with work and everything else. So I, it's, you know what it is. So you keep doing what you're doing. I see everything is working out for you good. So continue success. Love the fact that you're happy. That's a great thing. Let's keep that hard party going on the right side here. If you don't know what a hard party is, it means you double tap your screen to see those hearts go up, which let me know you digging what I'm saying. 
So what I'm saying about your relationship in terms of just letting it go is if you give up on a relationship that just needs tweaking to start something new, it may take you years to get back to right where you are right now. And so why give up all those years simply because you wanted to be with somebody new? That's what you got to be careful of. And that's what happened with my retarded phone situation. I wanted the new phone. I thought the new phone was going to do better for me when actually it pushed me so far back that the only alternative is to get rid of the new phone. So now I'm lucky enough to have the old phone to go back to or it would cost me money to buy another phone, which means I would have paid double to be right back where I started. Now, in a relationship, if you let go of the person that you're with and you don't really give in and try to work at the, the things that need to be tweaked, you could get with the new person and it'd be wonderful those first six months, maybe even the first year. But then as you start to go through some of the problems, you may wind up being pushed further back than you were with the person that you were already having some of these same problems with. Have a good night, darling. Oh, you got to get in touch with me. When am I going to be on? I mean, we talk about it, but I actually haven't been on. Baby doll, take that cup out of here before you spill something. Get out of here. Come here. Uh, uh, uh. Get out of that truck. What are you doing? Go back that way with mommy. Go ahead. Come on now. Stop. Go to mommy. Okay. KL, come here. You're not listening. Now, this is my baby girl here. Mwah. So what I'm saying by that is because... Um, you and your wife, I got, okay, yeah, we'll definitely hook up. Go to mommy. So, and a lot of us don't think about that. Um, so all of a sudden now you're with the new person going through some of the same problems. And you know what? I gave you a year. Sometimes, thank you so much. Um, it may not even be a year. You might be in the midst of those first six months of that honeymoon period end so quickly. And now you're sitting there thinking, why'd I leave her? Why'd I leave him? And now I'm here and now the happiness, the gloss off that happiness starts to disappear. Keep those hearts going. I appreciate it, guys. Let's keep that hard party going. Here's my answer. Here's my, my solution. If you've done all that you can do, if you can honestly say you've put the work in to try to fix what's wrong and that person just is not meeting you where you need to be, if you're not married, go ahead and walk away. Don't hesitate. Go ahead and walk away. Get you your own big phone. <laughs> But get one that works. Don't get one that's trash like I got. But if you're married, and I'm going to say, I'm going to tell you the reason why I said if you're married. If you're married, then you might need to have another talk with God. Because you're about to, if you walk away and if you get divorced, you're going to be in an, in an opposition position, an opposing position to the Lord. So you're going to really have to ask for forgiveness and then keep it moving. So before you want to take on that, you might really want to reanalyze the marriage situation. And again, I'm not going to get into the, we're going to have the religious argument on divorce back and forth. I'm just going to simply say, I didn't get married with God in mind the first time. So when it failed, I understood because God wasn't at the center. And once getting happily divorced, I got married to someone who understood my heart, who I understood their heart. And... In front of the Lord, we understood what that situation is. It has not been easy, but the work that we have put in has made the happiness what it is. And I believe that the Lord has allowed that to happen because of what I have trusted him to bring to my life. Not me going out and trying to force what I wanted in my life. And sometimes you have to humble yourself and allow God to place who he wants in your life and work from there. Too often, we try to go out and take what we want, thinking that's what life is about. When sometimes we have to fall back and allow the Lord to place in front of us what he wants for us. Too often, it's difficult for us to do that. Too often, we sit back and I, we want, we want. And tonight is a perfect example when talking about my phone. I wanted a phone. Did I need it? No. I went in to pay my bill and to get a case for the phone that was working. The phone I had nothing wrong with. Came out with a big, stupid, retarded phone and have not been able to scope since other than when I come home. So who gained? The phone company because they got me for the money. So sometimes we have to actually catch ourselves and say, okay, Lord, I am going to talk to you and then trust you. And if trusting you means that I'm going to sit and chill for a while and work at this, then I'm going to do that. 
if talking to the Lord means you got to sit and chill by yourself for a little while. Okay. Nothing wrong with being alone. It's different than being lonely. See, alone means you, go, you open up a bottle of wine, you turn on some smooth music that I'm listening to right now, and you have a chill night. Hello. You have a chill, quiet night with yourself. Lonely as you open up that same bottle of wine, you crying about a dude that don't want you. Understand the difference. Understand the difference. Alone means you come in from work, kick your shoes off, pop open a bottle of wine, turn on Netflix, and chill by yourself. And be cool with it when you get ready to go to bed. Lonely is putting on Netflix and starting to think about him and then call him over when you know he shouldn't be there in the crib. And then mad when he leave without hugging you when you knew he wasn't going to hug you when you invited him over. Hey, that's the lovely wife right there. Hey, sexy. That's what I'm talking about. And if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't even be where I need to be with my grad work. So it's up to her. So get on out of here. But yeah, so there's nothing wrong with being alone. And men too. And it's funny as men try to front like they're cool with being alone. And she just went back inside. I'll tell you, say hello. And men will call up women that they don't even want to be with just because they're not comfortable with being alone. They'll invite themselves over the women that they shouldn't be with because they're uncool with being by themselves. Sometimes that nice quiet ride in your car on a nice night where you can get your mind right might be all you need. Sometimes a quiet night with just you and God. Talking about the future, talking about the past, talking about the present might be all you need. And we really need to understand the difference. And it's all intertwined. It's based on want and need. And the whole premise of this scope was me explaining to you what I wanted compared to what I need. But when we extend that to relationships, there's no difference. Some of our biggest mistakes in relationships come from looking at what we want Instead of considering what we need or what we have based on what we need. And we tend to want to take love off like a coat. Put it on like a coat. Put it on like clothes. Take it off like clothes. No. Can't be. Baby doll, why are we yelling? KL, why are we yelling? Come here, mommy. Come say goodnight. Two-year-olds. Like schizophrenia. One minute everything is love. Next minute is like, leave me alone. <laughs> she got a pie for the back room. She don't want to come say goodbye to all of y'all. So anyway, guys, and some people don't get that. I'm telling them I'm single and good with that, and they won't try to. Yeah, you know what it is? Because they're not comfortable with themselves, and then they want to project that to you. That's that's. I'm glad you brought that up. I want to say that, too, is that be careful when you're in the midst of, of going through something, who you're allowing to speak into your situation. Because you got to be careful because some people will try to interject their negative feelings about themselves into where you are with yours. Thank you for the hearts. So they'll tell you all the negatives that could happen because it's negatives that have happened with them. And here they are trying to say to you, I'm trying to prevent you from being hurt. But actually what they're doing is trying to engulf you into a cloud of their own pain. Now that doesn't make them bad people because often they're not doing it on purpose. They're doing it from a painful platform. And so you're like, but if you're really their friend, you might have to turn to them and say, no, I'm not going through what you're going through. I don't have a man like you have. I don't have a woman like you have. So you really can't speak on this but i appreciate your offer but that's not where my head is at and it may not be the time to try to heal them right now because remember you're still going through something yourself and alone and lonely is a is a very familiar place for a lot of people and they'll start off alone and it changes into being lonely because they then let that meter of what i need to fall closer to the middle compared to what I want. So they start off with going, I'm cool with being alone. I'm going to do me. It's whatever. Fine. That's what they want to do. And then what they need starts to creep in. They would, what, what, I'm sorry, what they, that's what they need to do. And then what they want starts to creep in. 
So they start saying, well, I want somebody. I just want to spend some time with somebody. I just want somebody to want me. And all of a sudden, the wants start to talk to you. So now the bottle of wine and listening to the music is not enough. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. It's very true. I've been there myself. But what you have to say to yourself is that if it was good two weeks ago, it's good now. What you have to do is fill that time with something else. You have to find something else that's going to be the thing. Set up a <laughs> there you go. You was close. You about to hit that. I'm here button and you would have got every weirdo in the world. And before you would have known it, you would have been like, who's this dude? Some cat showing up with his chest hair out and taco meat. Talking about, yo, I saw your profile. <laughs> but no, seriously. If, um, if the bottle of wine and chilling was good two weeks ago, it could be good tonight but you might need to tweak it it might be time to go somewhere else it might be time instead of having that bottle of wine at home it might be time to just go out and listen to some music and have a glass of wine somewhere else do not place yourself in a vulnerable position because you're not getting what you feel you want when everything that you need is in a good place sometimes being by yourself is the time needed for you to reflect inwardly to be able to say to yourself, where am I at with mine? What am I doing with mine? And am I where I need to be? And, you know, I'm sitting here waiting for this guy and this girl. And am I really in a position that if they showed up, I would know what to do? So you might need to work on that. I always, I, and I, I counsel a lot of women when I'm talking because, of course, being a former whore, um, I have an insight to the way a lot of nasty men think. I was that dude. And one of the things I always say is that I didn't do this by myself. I wasn't a whore by myself. I was able to be a whore because I found people that said yes for whatever reason. Whether it was just an incredible lie that I told, whether it was I'll just give them as much attention that I could within the time that I gave them. But whatever it was, I did it with assistance. And then once you start to understand pain, now this is one thing why I'm big on trying to help women pass their pain. When you are in pain, you do not see straight. Physical pain, spiritual pain, emotional pain, I don't care what it is. When a person is in pain, think I want to just want to pull your coat to this a second. Think about when you're trying to work with a toothache and the tooth is radiating. You literally cannot think. And if the tooth pain gets too great, you will walk off the job. You will say, I, I can't work under these circumstances. So physical pain causes you not to think. Now let's turn that into emotional and spiritual pain. When a person is in an emotional, painful position, and they've been hurt by a dude, and I'm going to stick with the women, so a, a dude has hurt them, and hurt many, whatever. A real good liar understands that pain, so he's going to seem like the perfect medicine. He's going to seem like the perfect bandage. He's going to seem like the perfect answer to whatever is bothering you. He's going to say the right things. He's going to feel the right way. He's going to feel you and touch you the right way. He's going to say things and you are almost start to believe everything that you hear. But that's when you really got to hold your feet to the ground and say, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Didn't you start off with you're married? Didn't you start off with you had a girlfriend? You got to pay attention because if not, and you let that person in, they'll take that pain away. They will take that pain away. But what they replace it with is devastating. I'm telling you, the pain that they will replace, the pain that they took away will be so bad that you would almost die to have that other pain back. Because when you let a man like what I used to be in, it's, it's so hard to remove it because even after I'm gone, a part of you goes, why did I do that? Why did I allow him to have access to me like that? Why did I allow him to convince me to do these things like that? And you start to doubt yourself. You start to believe that you are less worthy because of what you allowed someone like me to do to you. And that's what I mean by I didn't do it alone. 
So my goal now, not being that dude, is to try to help women out as much as possible with arming them with as much ammunition or protection. I'm not just talking about condoms. I'm big on that too. But arming them with everything that you need to defend yourself against the true whore. Not the thirsty dude. The thirsty dude is not the true whore. Thank you. appreciate that. The thirsty dude is just thirsty. He's at every place you go. He's at the laundromat, the supermarket, the club, the bar, at work. He's at the red light. He's everywhere. You could be in a public toilet and the thirsty dude is standing at the door because he saw you go in. He's not the threat. He's easy to deal with. You can almost spray him like with bug spray. Get out of here. That's not the dude I'm talking about. I'm talking about the emotional wolf. I'm talking about the pseudo wannabe pimp who gets up in the morning and he's so unhappy with himself, he does not care whose lives or how many lives he destroys. Because to him, it's all about the conquest. At any point, at any situation, he does not care. And he will attach that conquest to what's between your legs, what's in your pockets, and just keep it going from there. And a good day is when he can bed you down and then get you to pay for it. Now he's smart. He's not going to ask you for your money outright. You on defense about that. I ain't giving no man my money. So he will convince you to buy the wine. He will convince you to pay for dinner and he'll cook it. He will convince you to pay for the hotel room. He will convince you to do things and then through the love making try to express to you how thankful he is that you've done these things and how he is so honored that you chose him to bestow these gifts upon. All sounds great. All sounds wonderful. But that's Tuesday night. Thursday night you don't hear from him. Wednesday night you don't hear from him. Friday night he might call to see what you're doing for the weekend. You busy? So is he. You want him to come over and chill because it's that time of the month? He's got some extra work to do. Now, I ain't wasting my time to go over there with her and I can't do nothing. So he's going to go on to the next chair. And he's going to be very surgical with how he presents why he can't come. His job is going to somehow have hours that fit when you need him. He's going to have mother or children situations that seem to evolve into when you want him to come by. Come here, baby. What's the matter? I can tell when the baby's tired. Yes, what's wrong? Oh, uh, what did mommy do? Come here. Come here. You're not coming here with me? You don't want to come up here with me? I'm trying to scope when you got a little one. I love it. But anyway, you have to defend yourself from that by not even giving him the toehold in. Don't even allow that man in. See, I can tell you the best defense is to not even engage. Don't even get sucked in. Beat him at the punch. When y'all sit down, y'all talk, and you meet him, look him right in the face and say, so what we doing? And he gonna give you this look. What you talking about? Look him right in the face and say, so we laying down or we just chilling? I'm saying we trying to, you know, we trying to get in a little something. And he gonna look at you like, I'm saying, what? Why? You, hold on, now he confused. So I'm just asking, boo, I wanna know, or you just wanna come over and knock it down or what we gonna do? Now, part of him is going to be hard because the freak in him going to go, yes, he want to have that conversation. So it's almost like you waving the drug in front of him. And he's going to say, well, I'm saying, why we? And then he's going to try to slow it down because you're taking the control from him. And you say to him, no, I want to know because I don't got time for games. If we're going to get into it, I need to know if we're going to get into it. If he's a dog, he'll can't, he can't resist. He can't resist. If he's a dog, he's going to say, I'm saying if that's what you want to do. And as soon as you hear that, say, look, I thought so. You know, have a good night. Have a good night. So that's how you get rid of the soft dude who's not really in that much control. A dude who's about himself some degree will go, I'm not understanding where this is coming from. At least now you put a boundary up. At least now you're letting him know I'm in control of me. So I'm going to ask at different times random questions about what we're going to do. Then get him to explain his relationship philosophy because he's going to want to try to get you to explain yours because he's listening so he can pick holes in it. 
Get him to explain his. Get him to explain, is he courting, dating, screwing, searching, lurking, whatever. Get him to put on the table what he's about. So later on, if you need to throw it in his face, you can. You told me at the beginning this. How we get here. Very important. But listen, guys. I Oh, my gosh. I almost forgot what time it is. I got some school work to do. I will scope. Today is Tuesday. I'm going to be in Delaware probably Thursday night. Um, Thursday night or Friday night, I'll be in Delaware. I'm going to scope Thursday or Friday night. I want to talk more about this relationship thing. And I want to talk about under uncovering the wolf. How to defend yourself from the wolf. Now, I can't answer if your man is a wolf. They lie, but actions speak louder than the words. Actions do, but be very careful. And I'm going to tell you why. The great whites of lying and pimping know that you're watching their actions. So they will forsake all others when they're around you. Because they have to keep their attention on you because they know that you are paying attention to their actions. So what they will do is wait until they're away from you and then call and do whatever else they want to do. The easiest way to cut through a man's foolishness, give you a little inside track before I jump off this scope, time. Time is the one thing that a pimp, player, whore cannot control. You tell him from the beginning, I need a lot of time. And he may go, what do you mean? I am a woman that likes time with her man. I am a woman that likes to spend time so I get to know what you like when you're eating, what you like when you're in public. That's one thing. The second thing is, here we go. Date through seasons. So what you met him in the fall, you met him in the wintertime. Date him through the next coming season. Some people are different in the wintertime than they are in the summertime. And I'll give you an example. In the summertime, it is easier to be out and about and do a lot of things. So some guys will tend to sever relationships leading into the summer because there's more action going on. And of course, they'll reverse it. Now, I was different. I cut you off in the wintertime because it was easy to go cuddle up somewhere and not be seen. And in the summertime, be with that one significant person because then it acts as a deflect to anybody that might want more than I'm willing to give and then secretly sneak and do what I wanted to do. So the wintertime was the time that I was trying to cuddle up. And the wintertime is when I was at doing some of my best because I didn't have to worry about being caught because it's cold. You ain't going to be outside in the cold. You could do a lot in your truck, in your car, in the cold. So the idea is you got to date that person through the seasons so you can get a feel for what they are when the seasons change. All of a sudden, now they can go play ball, and they're playing ball every day. Every day? Yeah, you sure how nice it was outside? Okay. And then when it rained, they played ball indoors. Right. But they didn't play ball at all through the wintertime. Gyms were closed in the wintertime. Little things that you got to pay attention to. So those two things, time. And pay attention to the seasons. And the time is the big one. Because a man that has multiple women, he has to find time to be with them. <laughs> Those are cuddle months, but you got to be careful. Because actually, some men will just chill in the winter time because they know they have options because people ain't going nowhere. You're sitting in your house chilling. Anywhere it goes too cold. I ain't, got, listen, I ain't hitting a club in the cold. So he'll be like, yo, why not just come by and we chill? <laughs> How about I bring some, you know, I bring a bottle of wine by and we chill. You already got wine. Say, I'm good. You know, be on top. Be out in front. It's not easy, but it goes back to what I said. Understanding what you want and what you need. <laughs> yes, they might not make it past the spring or summer. Very true, very true. But listen, guys, I got to get ready to go. I got some uh, some work to do. I got school tomorrow, and I'm off Thursday and Friday because, like I said, I have this um, job interview. So please wish me luck, and I thank you all for the hearts. 
And I thank everyone that has stayed with me. And I just want to say this to everyone. I thank you all for the support. I have been getting a lot of feedback from folks who have been watching my scopes, and I appreciate it. I don't worry about time and anything like that. Um, you know, I somebody had asked me today, why you scope so long? Because I got something to say. I may not scope for three, four, five days. I'm not worried about it. You average out my scopes, you see it's not that much. When I got something to say, I say it. I'm not worried about it. But again, my name is K.L. Belvin. If you need to reach me, you can stop by my website to check out my books and my publishing company. It's www.bravenpublishing.com. So if anybody knows, you can put the link up on the left-hand side there. Also, if you need to reach me directly, I do private counseling. We can set up something via Scope. Um, not Scope. You know, actually, I do not like using Periscope for counseling sessions. So I use Skype or Google Hangout. And I'm going to tell you why. I did a counseling session via Periscope, and I don't like when I can't see... The person that I'm speaking to is just, it feels one-sided. So I don't use it for private counseling anymore. Uh, what I do is I will use Skype or I will use Google Hangout so we can have a mutual connection and can see each other and can talk because in this way for the hour or whatever, um, we can actually get some things done. I also do um, counseling for um, publishing stuff too because I own my own publishing company, so I do help folks out in that aspect actually i'm working um shout out to keisha green i'm going to be working with her come the end of april we're doing like a session where i think we're going to be working out of her house inviting eight or nine or ten people to have private sessions with us to discuss the publishing industry to help them get them started and things like that so i'm a busy man but I'm, i always make myself accessible to the people that need me so again, if you need to reach me, main office at bravenpublishing.com. That's main office at b r a v i n publishing.com. That is my email address. I am on Facebook, author K L Belvin, as well as I have a literary page on Facebook, which is the literary page of K L Belvin. I have my business um, on Facebook, Braven Publishing. We're on Facebook. Also, my movement, which is making marriage cool again, is my movement. I am actually working on. One of the two books that I'm working on, one is called Lukewarm Saint Part 2. Lukewarm Saint Part 1 is out. And I'm working on another small book called Making Marriage Cool Again. Just some tips that my wife and I have come up with to help make your marriage cool. Little things that have worked for us. I'm working on that. So you'll see me on Facebook. Just look for me. Also, I'm on Google+. Plus. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Tumblr. I'm on God knows how many sites. IG. Just look up K.L. Belvin. Uh, my brand is simple. Everything is connected to me or my publishing company. So it's either K.L. Belvin or BravenPublishing.com. And so, and I'm around. So let me just run off some places where I'll be. Unfortunately, I know I said I would be in Napa Valley, California this weekend. Cannot make it. I will be in Delaware um, for three days or four days. I think I'm leaving Thursday. I'm coming home Saturday or Sunday. So if you're close to Delaware in Delaware and you want to sign a copy of one of my books, feel free to reach out. And if you're in Delaware and just want to meet, uh, hit me up. We can schedule something to get together. I love to meet people from uh, the net and have never met face to face. Also, uh, March, I will be in uh, Woodbury, New Jersey for the Literary Luncheon. I have been invited with four other authors to sit down and discuss uh, my three different books, which I'll give you the titles in a minute, with three, four other authors. We're going to be sit down have a wonderful luncheon. That is March 19th, the Saturday. Also, June 6th, which is the big date, at Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan, the Building Better Relationships Conference. Sister Regina Poole, and I don't have the other individuals there, so I apologize for not knowing their names. i got to burn that into my skull. But Brother Otis Bellinger has invited us to come and speak, and we're going to work on building, restoring everything towards relationships. We want folks to leave there with ammunition to help heal the things that's wrong um, in their relationship. So that's June 4th, Saturday, June 4th at Wayne State University. I am one of the keynote speakers along with three others. Cannot wait. And if you need more information, check out building better, building, buildingbettermen.org or check out Otis at ODIS at buildingbetter, buildingbettermen.org. That's his email, ODIS at buildingbettermen.org. And so, again... It has been my pleasure. I thank all of you for who have stayed with me. I will go back to check the analytics, and I will send out a, a direct thank you to everyone that has been on, to everyone that has left hearts for me today. I appreciate it. Now, let me just give you the titles of my book. 
my first book is Poetry, A Man in Transition, my poetry book. Second one is From Gigolo to Jesus, which is my testimony. I actually put down all my dirt, everything, the women, the miscarriage abortions. Yes, I talk about everything. From Gigolo to Jesus, that is my second book. And my third book, which just came out a couple of months ago, actually two months ago, Lukewarm Saint. It's a fictional story. It talks about a, an educator who's torn between his love for the women and what's the right things to do. He has a mother and grandmother that's trying to get him to change his lifestyle because it's that lifestyle that claimed his father and his grandfather, as well as he has two friends, two brothers who are each side of him explaining to him. Um, one is saying that he needs to get his life together. The other one is saying, man, you bed down as many women as you want. And he is caught in the midst of all this and a decision has to be made. The question is, what does it take for a person to make changes in their lives? So that is called Lukewarm Saint. And I'm actually working on book two to Lukewarm Saint. And all these books are available on my website, www.bravenpublishing.com. So again, I appreciate you hanging out with me tonight. I appreciate you laughing at me and the big retarded phone. The big retarded phone scandal where you do not make impulse purchases. You end up with a seven inch paperweight. Just ridiculous. <laughs> when I was quite okay with this. See? It worked. It was doing it was an iron horse. And I went with the big retarded phone. Yeah, they got me. Well, I got myself. And again, if you need to reach out, feel free. Come here, baby doll. Come say bye-bye. Come on. Come say bye-bye before we close out. Come on. Come here, darling. Ah, come up here. Uh, here bye. we go. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Say, I, see you later. See you later. <laughs> say, give me some hearts. Here to see the hearts. <laughs> say, tap that screen twice. Tap that that's what was that? Was that even English? <laughs> Tap that screen. Tap that screen. <laughs> so yes, guys, this is what it's about. And this is why we can't worry about the grass being greener. We got to take care of the grass in our own yards because sometimes we can overlook. Have a wonderful night. It has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for rocking out with me. I will talk to you real soon. God bless.